this young man over here. We carried a bike to him. When, when I was fishing, I fished with a guy named Harry Mitchell. And Harry Mitchell had a son, and he said, my son's going to be a great fisherman one day. Uh, and his name is Stanley Mitchell. And Stanley went on to win the Bassmaster Classic uh, in 1981. Then I fished with a guy, a really super guy, one of the greatest guys I've ever fished with, and his name was James Dudley. And James was an awesome guy, and he and I became good friends. And he said, I got a son that he's, gonna, he's dreaming about being a professional fisherman, and one day he's going to make it. And I just wonder, what happened, baby? <laughs> that deserves a drop the mic. Drop the mic. But yeah, I, he's told me that story a bunch of times. Me and him, lo I love hanging around Hank. We got, we actually got into a uh, a little bit heated discussion. We we put our boxing gloves on yesterday. About he's as passionate as I am about fishing, and uh, we got into a little heated discussion yesterday about the growth of smallmouth. And Terry Lay mentioned to it a little while ago, so I'll say a little bit of it, and then we'll just, I'll let Terry do his thing. So, we got into discussion about the, the growth of smallmouth bass, and Mr. Hank Parker said the reason the smallmouth have grown is because of the gobies, single-handedly gobies, is what he said. I said, hey, I'm going to have to disagree with you. And when I said disagree, you ain't ever seen a man put on boxing gloves so quick in your life. He put his boxing gloves on, his shin guards. I mean, he put the helmet on. He's like, come on, Dudley, we're going we to argue this out right here. I said, okay. So I said, I said zebra muscles is the explosion of the smallmouth growth. Not single-handedly, the gobies. I says, zebra mussels clean up the water, and because of cleaning up the water, smallmouth are sight fishermen, and now they're able to see 20 more feet beyond where they can see, and instead of a smallmouth only being able to feed on 1,000 calories a day, a smallmouth now can feed on 2,000 calories a day, whether it's a crawdad, L.Y., goby, uh, green perch, yellow perch, which they love. But now they're just eating a buffet more and more and more. And because of the water cleaning up, I said, zebra mussels is the one that made the smallmouth grow more. And that's when the boxing match started. So his theory is that because the, the gobies have a 38.7% fat rate, is what I think he said, and that a two-inch goby has a 42.0% fat rate on them, that the smallmouth now, in turn, or their fat content is a greater because of the goby. Not because of ring perch, not because of crawdads, not because of night crawlers, not because of LYs, not because of whatever else they eat, the little uh, poo-poo that falls down from the goose. But he said single-handedly, he said single-handedly goby's. So we can open that floor. We uh, look at look. Hey, so he just put his box glove. Hey, take your take your gloves off. Take your gloves. Off. All right, man, I just got to ask David something. So, what grows the biggest large mound in the country? Where are they located? California, right? Biggest large mound in the country, California. And what are they? They're Florida large mound. And what makes them big? Trout. Trout. Rainbow trout. What is that? That is a protein source. And what makes a deer big? Protein. So now, can you get protein from a lot of things? Yeah, but with a high protein. <laughs> All I have to say, you heard David's first tournament experience. He's had stage fright ever since. <laughs> so the other factor is this. I got to put my boxing gloves on now. So the other factor is this. California is clean water. 
Oh, and what do zebra mussels do? Oh, it cleans the water up. Oh, and because the water is clean in California and they're eating trout, it can see the trout and feast on them, they're getting bigger. Oh, but the common denominator is clean water. Oh, what protein is common, whether it's rain perch, crawdads, gobies, whatever, trout, crawdads, tailwives, whatever. But the common denominator is clean water from zebra mussels, cleaning it up, teeth. Here we go. <laughs> what about Sharon Harris, Jordan? Nice. Some of them lakes are like pure mud, and there's plenty of pure mud where they grow really big, so the clean water is not a, 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 a defined. And they find that, that find that what really makes a difference is that protein. It's a lot of them. So you had California with, with bass, and you weren't feeding them trout. They don't grow that big. So there you go. So I'm going back to scrum. I, you gotta, gotta let me talk for a minute. You can't talk the whole time, doesn't it? Now here's the thing. I'm gonna, here's one for Hank. I'm talking this up for Hank. I'm gonna let you explain it. Table rock. Got zebra mussels in there. They got the same size fish they had in for the last 50 years. So here you here You wanna talk? Go ahead and talk. But we're talking northern, for the most part, northern in a spotted bass. Come on now. You can't compare apples to oranges. So, so again, I'm not denying protein, but when the water is clean, they can see a trout from here to the end of the thing and can go track it down and catch it. So they're going to eat more protein. I'm not going to deny the protein source. Table Rock's got clean water and it's got dirty water. He's wanting another question. So, yeah. <laughs> What's your opinion, Matt? I just want to move my chair to the other end of the line. <laughs> oh. So, we, me and Brandon were talking earlier. We said, Hank's new name is Mr. Goby. <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't Hank Parker, it's Mr. Goby. 